Hello, and welcome back to NFBC Sunday School Online. And uh, wherever you may be, however you're uh, watching this, whether it be at work or home or cell phone, Facebook or YouTube, uh, the day of or a couple days later, um, just want to let you know that, that I'm praying for you. Uh, we as a church and leadership are praying for you. And we long for and are looking forward to the day that we can be back together. Uh, but again, until that happens, we're going to continue to provide opportunities for us to get into God's Word together and to grow together. And this week, uh, the curriculum that we're following, the Explore the Bible series from Lifeway, uh, kind of makes a detour from Romans because of this being Easter Sunday weekend. So I'm going to follow along with what they've done and take us to Luke chapter 24. And instead of just doing that passage, uh, every once in a while I think it's good for us to just read long passages of Scripture, particularly when it pertains to important events like Easter, and for us to just read God's Word and to hear God's Word, and to then focus on one verse, uh, chapter 24, verse 7, and how it kind of gives a summary of everything that's going on during this Easter season. And focus on a, a few quick points uh, that that verse shows us, a few quick points from uh, the story of Easter, of the uh, crucifixion, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, and the hope that we have as believers as a result of this time. Uh, it is a different Easter. We will not be able to gather together as a family of God to celebrate uh, the resurrection of our Savior, but we can gather wherever we are, and every day, and every moment of every day, uh, give thanks and worship the one who is worthy and conquered sin and death for us. So we're going to read together. If you uh, don't have your Bibles, something really easy you can do is pause it right now and uh, go get you a Bible and read along with me. Uh, there is no screen. There's not going to be any verses on the screen, nothing for you to read along with because we'll be reading quite a bit today. So we actually will be reading Luke chapter 23 verse 1 all the way through Luke chapter 24 and verse 12. Let's read together. <clears throat> then their whole assembly rose up and brought him, being Jesus, before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation, opposing payments of taxes to Caesar, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, you say so. Pilate then told the chief priests in the crowds, I find no grounds for charging this man. But they kept insisting. He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea from Galilee, where he started even to hear. And when Pilate heard this, he asked if the man was a Galilean. Finding that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem during those days. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. For a long time, he had wanted to see him because he had heard about him and was hoping to see some miracle performed by him. So he kept asking him questions, but Jesus did not answer him. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt, mocked him, dressed him in bright clothing, and sent him back to Pilate. That very day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Previously... They had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You have brought me this man as one who misleads the people. But in fact, after examining him in your presence, I have found no grounds to charge this man with those things you accuse him of. Neither has Herod, because he sent him back to us. Clearly, he has done nothing to deserve this. Therefore, I will have him whipped and then release him. Then they cry, all cried out together, Take this man away. Release Barabbas to us. He had been thrown into prison for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What has this man done wrong? I found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him whipped and then release him. 
But they kept up the pressure, demanding with loud voices that he be crucified. And their voices went out. So Pilate decided to grant their demand and released the one they were asking for, who had been thrown into prison for rebellion and murder. But he handed Jesus over to their will. As they led him away, they seized Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country and laid the cross on him to carry behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed him, including women who were mourning and lamenting him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and your children. Look, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the women without children, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, criminals, were also led away to be executed with him. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, because they do not know what they are doing. And they divided his clothes and cast lots. The people stood watching, and even the leaders were scoffing. He saved others. Let him save himself if this is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him. They came offering him sour wine and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. An inscription was above him. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals hanging there began to yell insults at him. Are you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him. But don't you even fear God? Since you are undergoing the same punishment, we are punished justly because we uh, we're getting back what we deserve for the things we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three because the sun's light failed. The curtain of the sanctuary was split down the middle. And Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. Saying this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what happened, he began to glorify God, saying, This man really was righteous. All the crowds that had gathered for the spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, went home, striking their chests. But all who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. There was a good and righteous man named Joseph, a member of the Sanhedrin, who had not agreed with their plan and action. He was from Arimathea, a Judean town, and was looking forward to the kingdom of God. He approached Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Taking it down, he wrapped it in fine linen and placed it in a tomb cut into the rock where no one had ever been placed. It was the preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed along and observed the tomb and how his body was placed. Then they returned and prepared spices and perfumes, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in but did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothes, so the women were terrified and bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Asked the men. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, It is necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them were telling the apostles these things. But these words seemed like nonsense to them, and they did not believe the women. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. When he stopped to look in, he saw only the linen clothes. So he went away, 
amazed at what happened. I'm going to draw your attention quickly to uh, chapter 24 and verse 7. In it, uh, the angels are commanding the women to remember the words of Jesus. It says, It is necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and rise on the third day. And the whole passage uh, is really summed up in those three statements, that the Son of Man would be betrayed by sinful men, be crucified, and rise on the third day. He was betrayed into the hands of sinful men. Uh, it's important for us to remember that Jesus didn't die because of something he did wrong. That he was sinless. He was the sinless Savior. And his death was not the result of his sins. But because of the betrayal of sinful people. And the crowd gathering around and having him crucified instead of one who was sinful. 1 John chapter 3, verse 5 says, You know that he appeared to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. While he wasn't crucified for his own sin, uh, the second part of that is that he is crucified. He was crucified for the sins of man. Last, a few weeks ago, actually, uh, we looked at Romans chapter 3, and verses 25 through 26, Paul says this. He says, God presented him as an atoning sacrifice in his blood, received through faith to demonstrate his, that's God's righteousness, because in his restraint, God passed over the sins previously committed. God presented him, Jesus, to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so that he would be righteous and declare righteous the one who has faith in Jesus. That Jesus was betrayed by sinful men he was not crucified for his own sins, but for the sins of the world, for the sins of sinful man, crucified for the sins of others, so that God would show himself to be righteous, and God would make righteous the one who places his faith in Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 summarizes it well. That God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God. It is necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified for the sins of man, and arise on the third day, risen to conquer sin and death for all time. It is a hopeful thing this Easter in the midst of a pandemic to remember a resurrected Savior. That because Jesus defeated sinful death, sin and death. We now have the hope of eternity without sin, without death, without disease. Again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says, For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For just as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. Eternal life forever with no weeping no pain no suffering no loss no grief he was betrayed into the hands of sinful men crucified for the sins of man and risen to conquer sin and death once and for all three quick ways to apply this passage the first is to believe in chapter 24 verse 11 it says this but these words seemed like nonsense to them, and they did not believe the women. What is true about many around the world today is that they do not believe these words. They do not believe the testimony of the women or the apostles or any other believer. They do not believe. And some even who are listening to these words now, you still have not placed your faith and hope and trust in Jesus. And the first application for you would be to believe. And for others uh, who have placed their faith and their hope and their trust in Jesus, that belief is a kind of a rekindling of that. We need to remember what we believe, to truly believe that he has conquered sin and death, that he is going to have the, the last word, and that uh, 
the things that we are facing now will not be ultimate. Second, to worship. In chapter 24, verse 12, it says, Peter got up and ran to the tomb. When he stooped to look in, he saw only the linen clothes. So he went away amazed, astonished, amazed by the fact that Jesus was the resurrected Savior. Let us stand amazed again at the one who conquered sin and death on our behalf. The one who is truly worthy of worship. And also, uh, let's report the things that we have seen and heard. In 24, verse 9, returning from the tomb, they, the women, reported all the things to the eleven. God has called us as believers to report about what God has done in our lives. Report about the truth of God to those around us. So quick examination questions for us. Uh, the first is, have I, have I believed? Have I placed my faith and hope and trust in these words and the truth of what has happened this Easter? Second, uh, with whom can I share? Whom can I report these things to? Is there someone that God has placed in your life that God is calling you to report the good news to? Third, uh, who has my worship? If God and God alone are worthy of worship and we continue to give our worship to other things, let's, let's examine ourselves and see who this Easter or what this Easter is receiving our worship. Um, and last, it's interesting to, to note that uh, this passage that the angel says is, comes as a result of uh, the women forgetting. The angel says in verse 6, He is not here but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. Remember. We so easily forget God's word and the difficulties of life and the trials of life and the temptations of life. We forget the words of God so frequently. One of the things we need to ask ourselves is, have we forgotten the hope of Easter, the truth of Easter, that sin Death, disease has been conquered once and for all. And we look forward to the day that he makes it so, so here on earth as it is in heaven. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, you know I'm praying for you and have a happy Easter.